Questions 1 through 10 of the 1998 Grade 8 Goss Math Contest is what I will cover in this video. Question number 1 says, the number 4567 is tripled. The ones digit or units digit in the resulting number is. So if you have 4, 5, 6, 7, and you triple it, multiplying it by 3 essentially, you'll get 13,701. And the ones digit or units digit in this case is the digit 1. So the answer is E. The smallest number in the set, 0, negative 17, 4, 3, and 2, negative 2, is? Well, the largest is 4, and then if you go in order decreasing, you would have 3, and then 0, and then minus 2, and minus 17. That would be from smallest to largest. So the smallest, of course, is minus 17, which is choice A. The average of negative 5, negative 2, 0, 4, and 8 is? To figure out the average, you add the numbers, and then you divide by the total number. So there was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so you divide by 5. The top is equal to 5. And we are dividing by 5, therefore 5 over 5 is equal to 1. So the answer in this case is D. Emily sits on a chair in a room. Behind her is a clock. In front of her is a mirror. In the mirror, she sees the image of the clock as shown. The actual time is closest to. So this is the image. All right, so this is a conceptual question. You basically have to figure out what this would look like in a mirror. So I will draw a little uh, circle and, and then I will draw what I believe it will look like. If this is the center, the small hand, which is right here, that will be essentially flipped that way. So currently it's pointing, I believe this is 7, right? This is 6. So it will then point to about, I believe, a little bit before 5. So if this is 6, this is 5. So I've got to redraw this. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to look like this. This, because here it looks like it's just slightly after the 7. So therefore it's got to be slightly before the 5. And then the, the big one, the big hand, looks like currently it's at the number 2 point in this clock. So in our reflection, it will be on the other side. So if this is 12, and this is 1, and this is 2, it will be over here, pointing to the 10. So like this. That's, a, that's basically the reflection in a mirror. So what time is it? That's what they're asking for, the actual time. And this looks like it would be 4, and then it's pointing at the 10, so that's 50. So that would be choice E. If 1.2 times 10 to the exponent 6 is doubled, what is the result? So you have this number, and then you're just multiplying it by 2. So all you really have to do is deal with those two numbers, so that just becomes 2.4, and the rest is untouched. So there would be choice A. Tuesday's high temperature was 4 Celsius warmer than Monday's. So if Monday is here and Tuesday is here, if Monday the temperature is X, 
Tuesday, it would be X plus 4 because it's 4 Celsius warmer. And then Wednesday, the high temperature is 6 Celsius cooler than Monday. So X minus 6 is the temperature on Wednesday. If Tuesday's high temperature is 22, so they're saying that this is 22, what is Wednesday's high temperature? Okay, so X plus 4 is equal to 22, and therefore X is 18. So X minus 6 would be 18 minus 6, or 12 degrees Celsius, and that is choice C. In the circle with center O, the shaded sector represents 20% of the area of the circle. What is the size of angle AOB? So angle AOB is this angle right in there. Now this shaded area is 20% of the area of the circle. So that means this angle is 20% of the total. Now what is the total of the entire angle all the way around? It is 360. So that angle is 20% or 0 0.2 times 360, which is equal to 72 degrees. And that would be choice B. The pattern of figures is repeated in the sequence. The 214th figure in the sequence is. So they've got these shapes. You've got a triangle followed by a filled in circle with a square, a filled in triangle, and a empty circle. And it looks like it just repeats like that. They want you to find out in the 214th position in the sequence, which one of these shapes is it. Well, we can write out all 214, but I think it's easier to recognize that this is the first, this is the second, third, fourth, and fifth. So every time you have a position that is a multiple of five, it will be this empty circle. So for example, the fifth position, the tenth position, the fifteenth position, the twentieth position, and so on. So if we get sufficiently close to 214, we can kind of figure this out. So we have 30 and then so on. And eventually you'll get to 200, 205, 210. So the 210th shape will be this empty circle because it's a multiple of five. So then 211, 212, 213, 214, and 215. These will just be the same order as, as I drew here, like that. And as expected, since 215 is a multiple of 5, it is, again, the empty circle. So 214 is what they're asking for, is the triangle that's filled in, and that would be D. When a pitcher is half full, it contains exactly enough water to fill three identical glasses. So let's say you have this pitcher, and when it's exactly half full, it has enough water to fill three identical glasses like that. So how full would the pitcher be if it had exactly enough water to fill four of the same glasses, all right? To make things easy, let's just give it a value. Let's say this is um, one liter. It's a very, very big glass. And therefore, this is three liters because this water was poured into these to fill those glasses. And they're saying that this is half full. So therefore, the total capacity of this pitcher is six liters. Now they want you to figure out a second scenario where you have four glasses and those four glasses are all full 
and that quantity of water is now in the pitcher. Same pitcher. Well, this is now 4 liters. So this is 4 liters, and 4 liters in a pitcher of capacity of 6 liters is 4 over 6, or 2 over 3. And that is choice A. Number 10. A bank employee is filling an empty cash machine with bundles of $5, $10, and $20 bills. Each bundle has 100 bills in it, and the machine holds 10 bundles of each type. What amount of money is required to fill the machine? All right, so let's make a table. We've got $5, $10, and $20. And then the notes and the bundles. So each of them has 10 bundles, right? Like that. And each bundle has 100 notes. So to figure out the total amount, it would be 10 bundles times 100 notes in each bundle times $5. That takes care of this one. And then you add 10 bundles with 100 notes times $10 for that. And then finally, 10 bundles with 100 notes each times $20 to take care of that. So this equals 1,000 times 5, 5,000. This is 1,000 times 10, 10,000. And this is 1,000 times 20, which is 20,000. So this is $35,000, which is how much money is required to fill this machine. So the answer is C.